This was one of the craziest hair growth experiments ever conducted. The scientists got lucky and after six months, the patients started regrowing impressive amounts of hair. Truly, no one expected this. Even better, the treatment required zero work from the patients. A simple 10 minute procedure and they were good for the next six months and zero side effects. So what in the world was this hair loss treatment that seemed on par with the best of the best hair loss treatments available like finasteride, but with zero side effects and zero effort? Why haven't we heard about this before and how can we use it to regrow our hair? All will be explained in this video coming up. So in 2010, a pair of doctors from Canada had a groundbreaking idea that might just help men with hair loss. I'll tell you in a minute what the procedure was, but first let me tell you exactly what they did and what results they had. First, they recruited 50 men with early to late stage baldness. The study overall lasted 60 weeks, but there were actually only two treatment days the entire time. The two treatment days were spaced 24 weeks apart. The rest of the time, the men did not take any action related to their hair loss. They went on with their life as normal. At the end of the 60 week study, the two doctors compared the men's results to their baseline photographs. The results were impressive. 75% or three out of the four men responded positively to the treatment. And in some cases, the regrowth was impressive. You can see here the before and after photographs of the two men who participated in the study. On the left, you see their head before they started treatment and on the right at the end of the 60 weeks. I want to emphasize once again that these men were only treated for two days. The remaining 418 days, the men did absolutely nothing. So no other treatments, no daily minoxidil, no daily finasteride, nothing at all. Just chilling at home or doing whatever they wanted. So what in the world was this groundbreaking treatment and how exactly did it achieve these astonishing results? Simply, the treatment was just a series of injections into the scalp of a substance that relaxed the scalp muscles. The substance was normally used to treat wrinkles by relaxing the facial muscles which I think I'm starting to get. The scientists decided to try relaxing the scalp muscles instead. We'll come back to the mechanics of how this actually works in just a minute. Right now, I wanna share with you the results of the most recent study published just a year ago, just to give you an idea of how powerful a treatment this really is. The researchers recruited 37 men with hair loss aged 20 to 51. They had all been off treatment for at least six months prior to enrolling in the study. All patients took oral finasteride and topical minoxidil as standard treatment. In addition, they received one muscle relaxing treatment at the start of the study. This was randomly injected either to the left or to the right side of the head. On the other side of the head, they were only injected with saline solution as a control. So overall, this is a well-controlled study where the comparison was literally within each patient's scalp. One half of each patient's head was injected with the substance and the other was not. This kind of research is a massive step up in quality from earlier research, which was typically uncontrolled and had much smaller sample sizes. So what were the results? After six months, the average hair count on the treated side of the head had gone up by 29%. Whereas the saline solution side, where you're only measuring the effects of finasteride and minoxidil, had gone up by only 13%. Overall, 28 out of the 37 patients had better results on the treated side. If you look at the photos from the study, you can literally see that the side of the head where it was treated with the injections has much thicker hair than the other side, and it's not even subtle. So let's circle back to the question we posed earlier. How do these muscle relaxing injections accomplish regrowth? And just so you know, the substance they injected was Botox. That's the substance used to relax the muscles. Hair loss research focuses overwhelmingly on the follicle, and this is understandable. Lose the follicle and you lose the hair. Pretty straightforward. But the follicle does not work in a vacuum. The tissue that surrounds and protects it is equally as important. And if you look at the scalp of somebody who is severely bald, like a Nord 6 or 7, it's pretty clear that the tissue is actually different. You don't need any special equipment to measure that. It's just obvious to the naked eye. The scalp is shiny, reflective, and has this kind of leathery quality to it. It's also thinner and harder. In 2021, a team of researchers out of Taiwan offered the first scientific proof of this 
when they measured and compared the hardness of the scalp skin in men with and without AGA. There were 57 men with and 23 men without AGA. The measurements were done in several well-defined points at the front and vertex of the scalp. Compared to the control men, the skin of those with AGA was significantly harder. Also, the more severe the hair loss, the harder the skin. Interestingly, the researchers ran a parallel experiment with women. So they compared the scalp hardness of women with and without AGA. They could not replicate these patterns with the women. In other words, neither the presence nor the severity of hair loss in women had a relation to scalp hardness. So the million dollar question is why? Why is balding scalp harder? And the answer is fibrosis, microscopic scarring that replaces the healthy tissue between the follicles. The longer the hair loss process goes on unchecked, the more severe the scarring. Eventually, as the follicles continue to miniaturize and die off completely, the space they previously occupied can fill up with this fibrotic tissue. One researcher who compared scalp specimens of balding and healthy men under magnification concluded that, quote, follicular miniaturization in male pattern baldness is a consequence of pathologic fibrosis of the connective tissue sheath. The central pathology relates to abnormalities of the perifollicular connective sheath. This was in 1988, shortly before finasteride arrived on the scene. Research of this kind was then largely neglected as everyone focused on narrowly blocking DHT and lost sight of the larger picture. Now, nobody knows 100% for sure exactly how Botox works against hair loss, but the most educated guess at this point is that it somehow halts this fibrotic process and breaks up this hardness. A review that came up in 2021 looked at all the published research up to that point. It's identified two possible mechanisms for how Botox worked on hair loss. Firstly, that Botox decreases the activity of a protein called transforming growth factor beta-1, TGF-B1 for short. This protein has been implicated in the hair follicle miniaturization process, but it's also been implicated in the buildup of fibrosis around the follicles, which we just touched upon. The second mechanism was relaxation of the scalp muscles. This is because compared to controls, balding men also have lower scalp blood flow. This is something we've known for several decades, but hasn't received the attention that it deserves. With all these Botox studies coming out now, researchers are once again paying attention. The author of one Botox study says, quote, the muscles around the periphery lead to a tight scalp, reducing the blood flow at the distal ends of the vessels, especially the vertex and front peaks. Botox loosens the scalp, reduces pressure on the perforating vasculature, and increases blood flow and oxygen concentration. The loss of hair following circulation problems is nothing specific even to the scalp. You can get the same thing happen to the legs from a condition called peripheral arterial disease. This is characterized by buildup of plaque in the blood vessels and reduced blood flow to the legs. Hair loss in this area is one of the common symptoms. So by relaxing the muscles in the area, Botox might allow blood to flow better, bringing the follicles back to life. Now, while Botox is proving to be a groundbreaking treatment against hair loss, it does come with one significant disadvantage, the cost, which is insanely expensive. It's not a treatment you can do at home and the doctor's visits won't be cheap. Depending on your geographical location and how much Botox you inject into the scalp, you're looking at between 500 to 1,000 US dollars per visit. The first two or three visits will typically be spaced a couple of months apart, and after that, you will require regular maintenance treatments. While there's no real established protocol for Botox, you'll be looking at treatments around every six months. So over time, the costs will begin to pile up. So unless you've got a bit of money to spare, Botox is probably not a viable treatment option for you. The good news, however, is Botox isn't the only way to achieve similar results. Manual stimulation of the scalp with traditional massages can conceivably achieve similar results at a fraction of the cost. The massages help relax the tension in the scalp and restore blood flow. The result is an increase in the influx of oxygen and other vital nutrients to the follicle and an arrest in the miniaturization process. Massages can also help break down the fibrotic tissue that is built up on the scalp, giving the follicles the vital space that they need to grow and thrive. The science of using scalp massages to reverse tissue changes in the scalp, restore blood flow and promote hair growth 
goes back at least to the 1980s. But in recent years, we've had a flurry of results that consolidated its position as a first-line treatment option for men with hair loss. A recent large study collected questionnaires from 327 people with AGA. All of them had used or still using scalp massages to treat their hair loss. 296 were men, 29 were women, and all participants massaged using their own hands. They didn't have the help of a professional or any sort of device. The researchers gathered data on the duration and frequency of the scalp massages. Most people reported massaging between 10 to 20 minutes a day. The typical participant massaged for seven to eight months overall. The researchers also asked participants to evaluate their own results. Scalp massages were found to be effective in stopping or partially reversing hair loss, but the results were dose dependent. Participants who massaged the most minutes daily tended to report the best results and the same goes for those who massaged over long periods on average it took participants a cumulative 36 hours of scalp massage to see results the one major disadvantage of manual scalp massages is that they can be extremely tedious massaging the scalp with your own hands day in day out can eventually become very tedious and it's one of the major reasons people discontinue this treatment enter the grow band an alternative to manual scalp massages is the use of a mechanical device called the grow band. You place it on your head and connect it to the control module called the grow box, which regulates the pumping action. The inner tube of the grow band lifts the scalp upwards as the air pressure increases. The motion of inflation and deflation causes the scalp to move up, release the tension and push blood back into the scalp all controlled by the automated grow box. In just 10 minutes per day, you can give the hair follicles everything they need to recover. Scalp tension is reduced, blood flow to the tissues is restored, and the hair follicles are allowed to breathe again, both literally and metaphorically. The entire process is automated and effortless, and you can go about your daily activities during the sessions. Our study with an advanced blood flow monitor actually showed that blood flow increased during and after the use of the grow band, exactly what was needed to feed the hair follicles with blood. One of the best things about the grow band is there are no harmful side effects and no monthly costs. Unlike using minoxidil and finasteride, which you need to buy every six months, and unlike Botox, where the bill can quickly reach into the many thousands of dollars. And it's the perfect companion to be used with any other hair loss treatments you're currently using. The reduced scalp tension and increased blood flow makes all other hair loss treatments much more effective, multiplying their effect. So it's something you can combine with any other treatment. Definitely make sure you check out Alex's 90 day hair growth challenge where he used the grow band for 90 days. I'll link to that in the description. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Leave a comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.